Hey guys, Bridget here. In this video, I want to talk about design systems in Figma and uh, share with you one of the most important lessons which uh, I learned uh, over the past years uh, working uh, as a UI UX designer and uh, working on uh, dozens upon dozens of design systems from uh, small startups to Fortune 500 companies. And uh, basically the principle that I wanted to share with you is starting and focusing on the basics. Now, there is this misconception that whenever you're creating a design system, it needs to have uh, all sorts of different uh, bells and whistles. It needs to be super complicated with uh, nested uh, layers upon nested layers, which are then grouped in components and uh, everything needs to be very complicated. And uh, although that is fun to create uh, to some degree, because you're literally creating uh, an entire system uh, in order to automate uh, and uh, future-proof uh, your design solutions that so that they're going to be very uh, efficiently organized and consistent. Uh, the basics are always going to be the base foundations uh, that uh, are going to yield the most ROI for both yourself and uh, the business. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, establishing elements uh, such as uh, colors, uh, and uh, typography initially having uh, an icon set that you can uh, leverage throughout the project and uh, you don't need to create uh, all sorts of uh, different uh, uh, colors right away with uh, all the different shades like i'm seeing these design systems where uh, people literally start uh, by creating uh, like infinite amount of uh, color variations for a new startup brand uh, and uh, that uh, can be an approach but personally it's uh, I don't think uh, right away it's uh, the best approach uh, especially when you're working with a startup that needs to get things done fast so you want to focus on uh, just a few set of colors that are going to be the primary, secondary, tertiary. Yes, you can create the different tones for that. And uh, also focusing uh, on uh, elements such as uh, the warning states or the error states or the uh, positive uh, UX states. So you don't want to overcomplicate it with this infinite amount of uh, uh, colors right away. And I'm seeing a lot of these design systems which uh, uh, advertise themselves as being uh, systems for startups. Uh, I don't. I, I think it looks uh, really nice, uh, but I think that uh, it lacks practicality. Now, on the other side, if you're working with uh, a company which is already mature, which uh, probably has been uh, in the business for quite some time, or they are enterprise companies, then uh, the topic uh, changes and. Uh, that is uh, uh, based on my experience. I worked on enterprise uh, uh, design systems and I know that uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations that you need to basically adhere to and the rules that you have to set because uh, companies uh, might have a very extended design teams or marketing teams that are going to leverage their, your, your design files. So you want to be much more prescriptive as to what are the rules that are going to be set when it comes to the branding. And uh, that is uh, really the key difference. When you're working with a startup, you want to keep things uh, simple and, uh, and nimble and uh, once the company grows up uh, you want to basically have this foundation to then possibly expand into a very complicated design system if needed so you want to start with the base and then uh, essentially always keep an eye on the future and uh, create a base that allows for creating more complexity if you wish uh, in uh, in the future but only if it's needed. I'm a fan of uh, uh, trying to figure out what uh, yields the best ROI in uh, the current uh, scenario. And uh, this is the main lesson which uh, I wanted to share with you. <clears throat> and this uh, applies also for the typography. Whenever I'm working on uh, a new project, what I like to do is to establish the H1s all the way to the H6, uh, low realistically, probably going to focus on uh, the top ones uh, the vast majority of the time. Uh, 
and this is specifically for website design and then uh, you know here we go all the way to the h10 um, these are you know scenarios which uh, uh, depending on uh, again on the type of design project you're probably not going to uh, use them as often what you are going to use as often is going to be a paragraph text or body uh, which is referred to and uh, i like to create uh, uh, maybe like two or three um, types uh, of uh, body size uh, which uh, are going to essentially help you to have uh, different options uh, say that the paragraph that you need is going to be small medium or large you have those options at your disposal and uh, it's uh, quite easy and simple overall to basically swap them and then some special states you know buttons hyperlinks uh, maybe emphasize the text uh, if you have any special type of text uh, in uh, uh, your website uh, or app uh, that uh, shall be included as well and uh, when it comes uh, to also like the the dark mode uh, i'm seeing a lot of people uh, focusing on the dark mode that really depends on the company to be honest it's uh, going to depend if you have a light and a dark ui switch uh, essentially which is not something which I recommend, especially for startups, uh, um, as it's going to add uh, quite a bit of extra, uh, both design and development uh, effort for something which uh, maybe it's not uh, as uh, essential, but again, it depends on the market. Some markets you might want to go ahead and, and add that extra uh, level of uh, detail. And uh, after that, uh, we can uh, focus on uh, the base uh, uh, elements, the base components of the design sy system, which uh, are going to be for the very most part things like buttons, input fields, uh, maybe menus like headers, footers, those type of um, uh, recurring elements. Uh, and uh, again, I wouldn't uh, go too crazy on uh, creating components with nested components upon nested components. So each and every single UI component which you're creating because uh, especially for startups and uh, small uh, businesses and by small business uh, I'm referring to maybe companies below a million in revenue or funding I can uh, actually um, say that in, in a lot of scenarios you don't need to have everything you know in a, in a way which is extremely structured because the moment that you're going to get uh, uh, to expand the team and uh, um, you're going to share these design files with uh, say marketing and other departments uh, you are going to need a documentation of some sort uh, and if you don't have that in place uh, they're not going to be able to basically work as efficiently as you're working as a sole designer or maybe if you're just the two of us of you and um, that's uh, pretty much uh, what I, what I like to cover from a, a basic foundation level when it comes to design systems in Figma. So the main takeaway of this video is uh, keep it short, keep it sweet. And if you want to learn more about uh, Figma, I actually recently launched uh, a nine plus hour course where I'm bringing you all the way from beginner to expert. And I'm literally taking you in the journey and uh, all of the knowledge that I learned over the past decade as a designer working with uh, over 40 clients uh, from uh, small startups to uh, enterprise companies uh, and uh, you're going to learn pretty much uh, everything that uh, I personally know on the topic so if uh, you want to bring your Figma design skills to the next level feel free to check it out also want to remind you that I have hundreds of free videos on YouTube, so those are available as well. I'll see you in the very next video.